Shabbat Shalom. It's, again, I, I, wisdom and Torah ministry is an, uh, uh, is an honor to be here and share the wonderful works of the Torah and uh, how we can uh, understand certain principles according to the Word of Yahweh. Uh, today's teaching is going to be on a subject that is basically creating a lot of wrinkles in the Messianic movement. Normally, my teachings are more uh, really edifying to unify the body of Messiah, but right now I'm confronted everywhere I go with teachings about disunity and separation. Um, Gentiles coming into the faith who really want to seek out Yahweh and spirit and truth, and my Jewish brothers are treating them like second-class citizens. We have to address this issue. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through Scripture, and I will give you a lot of Scripture, and we're going to go and find out what Yahweh says. What does He say? Does Yahweh say that a foreigner or a stranger who dwells within your gates, is he part of the congregation? Does he have the same type of uh, for rights as you do? Or is he a second-class citizen? Just sit in the back, don't talk. You're not a Jew. It's okay. You don't have to keep all the commandments. Just do only this seven. Only do these. Only do the ones that know our God. B'nai Noach. The sons of Noah. You're just the son of Noah. You're not really an Israelite. You're not, no. Forget about the word Israelite. You're not a Jew. You know, you just, just, you know, just follow along, sit there and learn. And you don't really have to follow Torah if you don't want to. It's not for you. That's what they're teaching. Messianic believing are teaching this. What is wrong? What is happening? So what happened to the body of Messiah? What happened to the perfect work of the Messiah? Did he come to do away with something? Or did he come to re restore and reunite again? The people of Israel. I'm only going to give you a small introduction with over 20 verses. You know, we're going to let the word speak in its own. Adam, Abel, Noah, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Yosef, Aaron, Moses. None of them were Jews. None of them were Jews. Moses was from the tribe of Levi. Aaron was from the tribe of Levi. Yosef was from the tribe of Yosef. Yaakov, that's where the name Israel came from. Okay, that's the change to his name, Israel. Yitzhak, he was not a Jew. Abraham was not a Jew. Noah was not a Jew. Abel was not a Jew. And Adam was not a Jew. So do they have full rights in the blessings? Are they considered part of the commonwealth of Israel? Are they considered part of the household of God? We got a problem because Judaism says that if you're a Gentile coming into the faith, now you're no longer a Gentile, you're a ger. Not a goyim, but a ger, which is a stranger. It's a correct term. It's correct. What does a ger mean? Let's go to that there real quick. The word ger is from the Strong's 01481, 1481 in the Strong's Dictionary. A, prim a, prim uh, a primitive root properly to turn aside from the road. For a lodging or any other purpose, a sojourner, a guest, also to shrink, fear, as in a stranger, a strange place, also to gather for hostility, abide, assemble, dwell, gather together, inhabitant, remain, remain, sojourn, stand in awe, stranger, so on and so forth. What does the word goyim, Gentile? Apparently from the same root as 1465, in the sense of massing, foreign nation, hence a Gentile. Also figuratively, a troop of animals, a flight of locusts, heathen nation, people. That's the definition of a Gentile. Now, I am not a Gentile. Okay, even though I was a Sephardic origin, my families are Hebrew Hebrew, Hebrews, actually from the tribe of Judah, or Levi, one of the two, we don't know which one, but you know, from the southern kingdom. You know, coming in from Spain to the Canary Islands, all the way to Puerto Rico, and so on and so forth. You see, but the thing about it was that I was living like a goyim. I was living like a Gentile. What does the word goyim mean? The word goyim really means a heathen, a pagan, a murderer, a fornicator. So Yahweh takes you from being a what? A pagan, a heathen, a fornicator into to be what? Israel. Yes. He, gives you a, he gives you a title of majesty, which means rulers with Elohim. Rumin's with God, Eloah. So he takes you from being a heathen to being a what? Israel. Now what's interesting is that you see my Jewish brothers, Yehudim, Yehudah, which is only one tribe, 
It's trying to keep people to come in and graft themselves into. See, Yehuda, let me give you a real quick explanation, which a lot of my Messianic brothers are not getting, and I don't know why. See, all of the Jews are Israel, but not all Israel are Jews. It's like all of the priests were Levites, but not all the Levites are high priests. I mean, is that really hard to understand? It's one plus one is two, right? Or plus one plus one equals four. It depends who you're talking to. You know, if you use Midrash, you use uh, some of the other things, they can come up with their own explanations or whatever, what they think it is. The problem is that the Noahide laws, even though you find them in Genesis chapter 9, but it became instituted as a, uh, as a halakha in the rabbinical Judaism but in the Talmudic times. In the Talmudic times. It was not something that was completely, you know, it was, it was shown by Yahweh given to Noah after the flood as a way of keeping order after the flood, right? But does that mean that you're not going to keep the Torah? Was there a Torah before Noah, before Moses? Let's go to Genesis 26. Is this making sense so far? Amen. There's a division amongst Messianic believers. And I know of some congregations in which they'll make you feel like you can be a, you can be a member if you're a Gentile origin. If you're Jewish, okay, fine, you can be a member. You can be in leadership if you're a Gentile. <coughs> We're going to study if that's really what the, Bible, what the Bible and what Yahweh says. Now, in uh, Genesis 26, verse 5 says, Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my Torah. But wait a minute. This was Abraham. It's almost 400 years before Moses, right? So, were there commandments? Noah. Noah knew what was clean and unclean, well, didn't he? Then he built an altar and offered a sacrifice unto Yahweh. How did he know how to do that? Okay? Abraham understood these principles. Isaac understood these principles. Yitzhak, I mean, uh, uh, Yaakov understood these principles, right? I'll give you another example real quick. And also that's Judaism in Exodus. When you go to the mixed multitude, right? The Orthodox Judaism says, oh, the mu mixed multitude were the ones who, who, who build the golden calf or who entice uh, uh, Aaron to build it, which, okay, fine, I'm going to give it to you. That's cool. Okay, but we got a problem. See, when you go to Exodus chapter 32, in the judgment of the idolatry of Israel, says, then Moses, then he took uh, Exodus 32, verse 20. Exodus 20, 32, verse 20. 